They say a fishing rod is really just a long pole with a hook on one end and an idiot on the other. And I don't think if it matters if that hook, you know, has some feather or fluff tied to it or, you know, just a big metal spoon. We're all out there for the same reasons and that's to connect with the environment by pursuing these elusive fish. If there's a study from the 70s from DFO that says this area shouldn't be developed, I can't imagine what's changed in the last 40 years in that situation where all of a sudden it's a good idea. We have the Port of Prince Rupert courting the LNG industry to put an LNG facility there. If they were trying to, to find a worse, the worst possible site to put it in terms of impacts to salmon and other species, they, they found it. Well, this area is only the most area with wild salmon. And maybe in a couple of years, you have no wild, wild salmon there. I'm in the business of hope. If I don't have hope, then I don't have anything. One of the great things about being a, an angler is it, it gives you a, a perspective, you know, from knee deep in the river. And you wouldn't typically find yourself in that situation unless you were fishing. And it's it, perhaps it's part primal being out there in the pursuit of something, but I think it, it probably has a lot to do with just slowing things down and whatever you do in a day to day life. Um, when you're out there in the river and you're trying to hopefully have a fish bite your line, you're just kind of out there being, it just slows things down for you. So I think it's, that's its big redeeming quality as a pastime, is it uh, just gives you a sense of calm over time. I met Dieter and Ushi about a year and a half ago when we first had the idea to take over this property. Over time, I've really become incredibly fond of them. They've really created this culture of welcomeness around the property where everyone's here to fish and it really is just like one big extended family. And for us, you know, taking over the lodge in October, but them letting us live here since early July, it, it really, I think, entrenched in us the, the family values that have built this place. Every dream from the fishermen is to catch a big salmon in Canada. When you talk in Germany over fishing in Canada, this is a dream from every fisherman. Canada is paradise for fishing. And this was the same to me. And then I catch this big fish. And oh, after then I sit down, maybe I'm my is going like crazy. <laughs> and after then, when I go back to Germany, every time my dream was Canada, Canada, Canada. And then I'm for sale my, my house, my business. The first thing I'm looking for a nice property was not too far from town, close to the water on in the bush. And I found this property there and this was perfect. 25 years. Every year, four months, every day, eight hours on the water. My whole life was good. You know, going through those those albums with the rubies, uh, it's and you know being in this place while you're doing it, and it's almost like the ghost of the past. You really kind of are taken back to you know 32 guests, everybody's caught their limit. I mean, it's a pretty happy place at that time. You sort of start looking at the bigger picture, and you realize that for these opportunities to continue, we need to be stewards of the resource. To me, you're not going to stop all development. I personally don't want to stop all development, but I think it what makes sense is common sense and you have to pick the development that is the least disruptive and you know the stuff that benefits the community as a whole. What I love about uh, Skeena Wild as an organization and in particular Greg and Julia is their common sense approach to development. They, they recognize that people depend on the Skeena to make their living and they really have done a fantastic job of helping the community to to be educated on you know, the issues when it comes to over harvest and in particular oil and gas development. There's a liquefied natural gas facility proposed for the mouth of the Skeena on Lilu Island and that would be placed right over top of the most critical salmon habitat we have here in the Skeena. We estimate anywhere from 80 to 90 percent of the fish leaving the Skeena when they're about this big in the spring pass through this specific area that's proposed for development. 
and that's a time when they're coming out of the river, they're, they're really vulnerable. They uh, suffer their highest mortality rates because they're transitioning from fresh water to salt water. They're, they're trying to find new food, avoid new predators, deal with strong ocean currents, those sorts of things. But the biggest concern is that they're gonna dredge up approximately 700,000 cubic meters of mud and sand. And within this sediment lies a lot of toxins because for over 60 years, a decommissioned pulp mill in, in Port Edward there discharged uh, dioxins, furans, PAHs, and other highly toxic chemicals into the sediment. And the, it's buried about six inches under the surface. But as soon as you dredge that up and re-release it into the environment it, and doing it all at once, could have serious impacts on fish and, and other organisms. And we've been working with people from Simon Fraser University, uh, local First Nations, and other researchers who have been speaking out and expressing uh, strong concerns around this particular development there. What we're simply asking for is that they find a more suitable site, and we think that's a pretty fair thing to do. I've been around the world and seen the worn out faces delete the colours one by one and leave the worn out places. That lyric really rings true to me in terms of why it's important to, to carry out this work because it's still very colourful and vibrant here. Whether it's direct or indirect, everybody in this region has some sort of a connection to wild salmon. We're so innovative as human beings, there's no good reason that we can't have jobs that are designed around our values and the things that matter to us, the things that we need to survive. Clean water and clean air are two of those things. My fear is that so much harm can be done in a small period of time that we won't be able to undo it. There's acceptable risk and there's unacceptable risk. And what's being proposed at the estuary of the Skeena River is unacceptable risk. I've been coming up here to the terrace area since 2007. The mountains are just insane and at the time I didn't know it but the fishing is probably the best in the world. Started out salmon fishing then like most fishermen you make the transition into fly fishing just because it offers a little bit more of a challenge. At the top of the ladder, in my opinion, is steelhead. So I feel like everyone who gets into fishing, at least in Canada, especially in BC, whatever you start out doing, it always kind of leads to the same sort of destination, which is steelheading on the fly. And I think at the top, you're catching steelhead on a swung fly that you tied yourself. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't even have words. It's just, it's awesome. That's, <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> so, you know, I'm a little bit concerned about what the next 10 years might look like, what, what the fishery is going to look like when my kids are old enough to run around with a fishing rod. You got to have faith that with every problem there's also a solution. And I think there are a lot of people out here who care and are not going to let, you know, a few greedy people destroy this for everyone.